Hello, today we talk about summation of angular momenta. Let's say we have a system V1 of angular momenta of angular momentum G1. If we have the dimension 2 G1 plus 1 and we can take a basis for this system which we have 2 G1 plus 1 independent elements and they are parameterized with the spin in a particular direction which we will call m1 and they are parameterized like this g1 m1 and, and m1 can take the values from minus g1 plus g1 and all of them will be shifted of 1 in such a way that they are 2 g1 plus 1 elements so that if we have an even number of states here it would take we would take um, some integer values so that they will not reach the zero and the states will be exactly 2g1 plus 1 but instead if they have um, an odd number of elements here they would take integer values so they will have the zero and the number of elements will be 2g1 plus 1 Let's now take a second system V2 of momentum J2 with basis states J2, M2 and M2 can take the values from minus J2 up to J2 and now we want to compute the angular momentum of a system V3 which is the coupling of these two systems so given by the tensor product V1 times V2 it will have a momentum, let's call it J and it will have a basis of states, let's call them Jm when M is, where M is the angular momentum in a particular direction and since this is also an angular momentum, also here M will take the values from minus J up to plus J. Now when coupling these two systems, J in principle can have any value uh, from the absolute value of the difference of these two angular momenta, G1 minus G2, up to up to uh, the absolute value of g1 plus d2 so up to the sum of these two angular momenta and we don't, we don't need the absolute value here because they are positive numbers and if we have m1 here and m2 here m here will be exactly the sum m1 plus m2 so this number m is completely determined by m1 and m2 and if we have a system with a particular G and a particular M, it will be decomposed in the system V1, V2 and it will be decomposed in two uh, angular momenta G1, J2 and M1, M2 with a particular probability for each possibility. To evidentiate these probabilities we should write this vector in terms of basis uh, with these coefficients. Um, with So the basis will be elements from the tensor space um, J1 so they, we write them J1 and 1 J2 and 2 so let's expand the and that basis we will have summation of 1 J1 sorry G1 and 1 J2 and 2 times G1 M1 J2 M2 J M so these coefficients square represent the probability of decoupling this system in two systems with um, these values for the angular momentum G1 M1 in system 1 and G2 M2 in system 2 so um, the probability of decoupling them like this is given by the modulus squared of this. 
and these products are called the clutch garden coefficients and I write it here clubs clubish garden and they are usually written as C J M G1 M1 G2 and 2 there are ways to calculate these coefficients I will not calculate them here and there are tables with these coefficients and they are arbitrary up to a phase shift and they are conventionally chosen in such a way that they are real numbers now what about the inverse problem you have G1 and 1, G2 and 2 and you want to calculate the probability um, that they couple to a system with J and M uh, we will in this case right expand g1 and 1 j2 and 2 in basis uh, jm so we do the summation jm jm j1 and 1 j2 and 2 where m will be m1 plus m2 if m is different from this the coefficient will be 0 and j is between j1 minus j2 and j1 plus j2 now the coefficients which are here would be the inverse Gordian coefficients but we have said that this is chosen to be real this is exactly the complex conjugate of this because here we have bra1 cat2 here we have bra2 cat1 so this is the complex conjugate of this one and since they are real numbers they are exactly the same so there is only one single table with catch code and coefficients and they are used for both the direct problem and the inverse problem so this is all for today this was a very quick video See you next time. It has been a pleasure.